Hello, <laughs> I'm David Gladwin, Black Isle Brewery. We are Scotland's only fully organic brewery. We have been going for 16 years or more now. We're based up here in the north of Scotland on the Black Isle, just north of Inverness. It is an exceptionally beautiful part of the country to be uh, uh, brewing beer in. This is our brewery in here. Uh, used to be a cattle shed. Just to sort of kind of walk and talk through the brewing process really, you know, beer's made from four ingredients, malted barley, water, hops and yeast. The yeast is our own yeast that we've kept here since the brewery started. It's a living culture that we've always had and we keep it and crop it and use it from one brew to the next. And the water, we have our own borehole, so we've got our own source of water here. Over here we have a, a selection of some of the different malts that we use in the brewing process. By no means, there's not all of them, but this is a good, um, a good selection here. It gives you an idea of so, so kind of extremes of, of what a maltster can do with barley and, uh, and also how it's useful to us in the brewing process to get colour and flavour and, and um, sort of different style into the beer. So this one here is uh, a light sort of uh, lager malt. It's the one that we would use in, in almost every beer recipe that we, um, the, uh, every beer that we make. And it's a kind of base malt. Our blonde beer would use just this malt. So you get a very light, pale um, blonde beer. If you um, use this malt, it's called crystal malt. It's got a lovely nutty toffee type aroma. It's absolutely delicious and also puts a red colour into the beer. So depending on how much we use and how we mix these two together, we'd get anything from a quite light amber coloured beer to um, you know, a, a dark ruby red one, you know, if we used enough of it. Um, this one <coughs> is called chocolate malt. It's very roasted, it actually smells like sort of dark bitter chocolate or coffee really. And we use that for the porters and the stouts. So we would mix all these different malts together and one or two others for making something like our oatmeal stout, hibernator oatmeal stout or porter uh, would use again all these three malts in varying degrees. Depending on the beer we're gonna make, we would select the different malts, mix them together into the hopper, crush them, and it's a bit like making coffee. We keep it as whole grain and a whole bean prior to brewing with it, and it keeps it fresher, so we'll crush it. The moment we're gonna brew with it, we then come through this auger here, clickety-clack, into what's known as our mash tun, and effectively we make a giant porridge. The hot water and crushed malt is delicious. It, it smells fantastic when you're doing that. It'll sit there for an hour and a half, and in that time, the water breaks down the starches in the malt and converts them into sugars. We will then drain that out of, the, uh, out of the malt, out of the mash, and at the same time rinse hot water through it so we can get all that sugary uh, uh, liquid out and pump it through into our copper, our boiler, which is next door. We get the thing, uh, bring it up to boiling, and um, we add these little beasties here, which are hops. So the hops put the bitterness and the aroma into the beer. And there are different varieties. Some of them are more bittering varieties. Some are, are more uh, for aroma. And then we pump it through into our fermenters, this row of vessels here. Um, so this liquid we pump into here and then we add in the, the yeast and the yeast um, starts to eat up the sugars that we made in the mash tun and convert that into alcohol and CO2. And that's a process, depending on the beer, it, uh, it could take five days, six days, it could take longer for some of the bigger, stronger sort of uh, uh, beers. So after the fermentation process, we'll then collect the yeast and we'll pump the beer into uh, other conditioning tanks through here. So all these will have different beers in. Just looking down here, we've got an oatmeal stout, hibernator, we've got goldfinch in the next one, and it looks like red kite in, in, in the one down the end there. Uh, yellow hammer in here, there's 10,000 litres of yellow hammer in there. One of my favourite beers, the, uh, the sort of kind of go-to beer in the bar, unfined pint of Yellowhammer is just the best thing to sort of slake your thirst if you've had a bit of a hard day in the brewery. So that's the kind of brewing side of life. Through the brewery, it allowed us to buy eventually 130 acres around the, around the 
library here and to buy all these buildings and uh, to relocate. We started off in a tiny little shed down the way there and then we moved up here about eight, nine years ago. But it was the brewery that allowed us to do this and, and, and it was great because it, it gave us an opportunity to kind of put our money where our mouths were and where we were you know, promoting organic beer and, and for us to sort of kind of engage a bit more closely with that by converting this farm which had been a very much a very non-organic farm for, for many, many years just used for growing barley year in, year out and nothing else and, and uh, they just chuck on a load of fertilizers and sprays and, and herbicides and pesticides and just kind of almost bully the land into, into producing barley each year. So we wanted to change that and make a much more natural sort of uh, way of, of farming it and we've introduced the sheep. They are reared really well, you know, these are very, very happy, happy sheep. They eat fantastically well. Through the winter, we can feed them draft on the mash tun, so the spent grains come out of the mash tun and they'll get fed to them, so they get lovely, warm, multi porridge, you know, through the winter. We have this sort of kind of cycle now where we move everything around. We move the sheep and the grazing and then barley, and it just goes around in, 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 in a cycle. And sure, it's less productive, uh, it's much more diverse, you know, where we lose in, in sort of yield and, uh, and tons per acre or per hectare. What we gain in is we've got beautiful sort of wildlife. We've got lovely birds. We've got, you know, the whole ecology of the place has sort of uh, has improved. Just the, the health of it, you know, we walk across those fields, there are skylarks in the air. It's nicer having all these lovely things around than just being able to make a little bit more money or extract a bit more out of, uh, uh, out of the, the ground. And it's much more sustainable. Also, it's just an utterly beautiful place, I think, and so what a nice place to make beer, you know, and particularly um, organic beer.